Welcome to our incoming officers and board members. Your term begins during this fall's board meeting on Monday, October 21st at 1 p.m. Central in Chicago during the Society for Neuroscience annual meeting. Our incoming officers include Dr. Matt Rizzo as incoming chair and Diana Fellner as incoming treasurer. You will serve a two-year term with an option to be reelected to one additional two-year term. Dr. Mark Rasnick will begin his second term as secretary. Our incoming board members include Craig Obey with the American Psychiatric Association, Leslie Ritter with the National MS Society, and Sarah Tellick with the Alzheimer's Association. You will serve a three-year term with an option to be reelected to one additional three-year term. I'd like to use this next 20 or so minutes to acquaint you with some areas of the ABC you might not be familiar with. I'd first like to give you a little history of the ABC. ABC was founded 15 years ago when the American Academy of Neurology and the Society for Neuroscience got together and recognized the need for clinicians and researchers to better interact with the brain-related patient advocacy community. The American College of Neuropsychopharmacology joined the conversation shortly after, recognizing the importance of the psychiatric community getting involved as well. AAN, SFN, and ACMP contributed $25,000 per year while the ABC was getting off its feet. During his time as president of the AAN, Dr. Francis Kittredge made it his goal to establish the ABC. He served as our first chair and is still a great advocate for the work we are doing. Dr. Joseph Coyle served as the second chair, being recommended by ACMP, but also an SFN past president. During his time as chair, the ABC changed its membership due structure, so the three founding members were not carrying the weight of the ABC. Dr. Coyle also helped bring in corporate members, which I'll talk about more shortly. Robin Elliott served as board chair after Dr. Coyle. Robin was instrumental in connecting the ABC to the Brain Initiative, ensuring the patient advocacy community was informed of all progress and was advocating for this important initiative. Under Robin's leadership, we solidified our relationship with the Congressional Neuroscience Caucus as the hosts for CNC briefings and receptions, which I'll talk about more in a bit. As you know, Janet Heischetter is the current ABC chair. Janet formalized our educational programming by recommending the ABC form a program committee. She was also instrumental in recognizing the ABC was more of an educator rather than a lobbying organization. ABC was initially incorporated as a 501c4 tax-exempt organization. This tax-exempt status allowed for no lobbying restrictions. With half of our budget going to our, our legislative consultants, this was important at the time. As I mentioned, Janet and the board recognized that the ABC was more of an educational umbrella organization and hardly doing any direct lobbying. Because of this, the ABC applied for and was accepted as a 501c3 organization. This change will allow us to receive more grants and outside funds from foundations and for-profit companies. As you know, the ABC is nothing without its membership. Our membership is broken down into the following membership categories, nonprofit, academic institutions, industry, and observers. We have grown to over 90 nonprofit organizations, including professional, clinician, research, and academic organizations, as well as very large and very small disease specific patient advocacy groups. Nonprofit members are asked to contribute 0.1% of their total revenue in yearly dues. In 2017, we started accepting academic institutions as members. We found that many individuals are active within the ABC through their professional organizations but a few specific academic institutions have expressed interest as well. Academic institutions pay $2,000 in yearly dues. In 2011, the board recognized the importance of working with our industry partners in a more formal way. The ABC has 13 corporate members, all larger pharmaceutical companies. Corporate members pay either $10,000 or $15,000 in yearly dues. I am looking into a smaller startup membership category, which I hope to develop further with Dr. Rizzo and bring back to the board for recommendation later this year. ABC works closely with government agencies in the brain space, especially the brain-related organizations at the NIH. 
Dr. Korshitz was present when the ABC was formed and has remained one of our biggest fans. The ABC membership formally meets once a year, generally in conjunction with one of our membership organizations meetings or during the NINDS nonprofit forum. Through trial and error, we have found that our best attended meetings are held either in Washington, D.C. or Chicago. These meetings are a time for the different disease-specific groups that otherwise would not interact to be able to do so. It also allows for our clinicians, researchers, and industry partners to engage with the disease-specific advocacy groups. The officers of the board oversee the board and its activities. Current board members are eligible to serve as officers. Ted Thompson and Robert Wexler are rotating off during this fall's meeting as are Louise as treasurer and Robin as past chair. As you can see in the fall board composition, Janet will remain on the board and move to the past chair position. When the ABC started accepting corporate members, we only had a handful, and therefore it was agreed it was a good idea to include a representative from each company to sit on the board as a non-voting member. It has been brought up by a few corporate members that they'd prefer to actually not be on our board and instead be part of a corporate advisory council. Because of this, and the fact that there are now 13 corporate members, the board will be voting soon to take them off the board and establish a formal corporate advisory council. I've spoken with all of our corporate members and they all agree that this idea makes sense. Originally, the ABC board met monthly by conference call, but a few years back, the board agreed that every other month was sufficient due to everyone's busy schedules. The board also meets one to two times per year in person. The board chair chairs the board meetings and calls and asks one of the officers to do so in his or her absence. I provide the chair and others on the board who are part of the agenda with annotated agendas or talking points for each meeting. As executive director, I'm invited to participate in all board meetings and calls as a non-voting member. The executive director may be asked to step off of calls for an executive session of, of the board. I'd now like to go over some organizational items with you. Monthly financials and the executive director's expenses are shared with the treasurer. The treasurer has access to all banking, investments, and payroll. The treasurer reports all financials during the board meetings and at the annual membership meeting. I first put together all the financials and go over this with the treasurer to make it as easy as possible. At the recommendation of our outside consulting firm, now that we are a 501c3, I have put together a financial policies and procedures manual, which has been reviewed by the consulting company, the treasurer, and the board chair, and is ready for board approval. Additionally, the outside financial company recommended we have certain financial policies and procedures in place. These policies will be approved by the board later this year. To provide you with a bit of my background, I was employed at the Society for Neuroscience for eight years, serving under the executive director as associate director and senior director for planning and membership. I served as the first executive director of the ABC and have been with the ABC since it was incorporated. I am compensated for 30 hours a week, working mostly Mondays through, through Thursdays, generally taking Fridays off. I work remotely from a home office in Minneapolis, but travel to DC frequently. I hired Sheila Stern two years ago. Sheila works remotely as well and is also in the Minneapolis area. Sheila works 20 hours per week. She assists with all financials, programming, and social media. The ABC's Advocacy Committee is currently chaired by Dr. Mark Rasnick. The ABC relies on our Advocacy Committee to advance the ABC's policy agenda and help determine key legislative issues that ABC should be advocating for. The committee meets every, month, every other month by conference call. We work with Lyle Dennis and Celia Hagen from Kavaraki Ruscio Dennis Associates as our legislative consultants. CRD became the ABC's consultant shortly after the ABC was incorporated. CRD was and is SFN's consultants and became the ABC's consultants as kind of an in-kind add-on, only charging us a minimal fee for many years. We are now paying CRD $57,000 per year for our regular fee and $54,000 per year for the ABCI2 fee. The ABC's policy issues include increased funding for biomedical research at the NIH, 
improving healthcare for chronic conditions particular to the brain, eliminating restrictions on federally funded stem cell research, and supporting the ethical use of animals in research. Based on our policy issues, the ABC regularly provides statements and letters in support of or opposition of legislative bills. The ABC offers our members an online legislative action center, which allows members to easily contact their senator or member of Congress. The ABC signs on to opportunities sent by like-minded coalitions or ABC member organizations that might be coordinating an effort on a piece of legislation. As I mentioned earlier, the ABC has been working to, to advocate for the BRAIN Initiative by hosting webinars, in-person meetings, and Congressional Neuroscience Caucus briefings and receptions to educate the patient advocacy community and members of Congress of, this important, of the importance of BRAIN. The program committee is currently chaired by Dr. Matt Rizzo. The program committee is responsible for developing, implementing, and monitoring educational programs offered by the coalition. The committee has polled the ABC membership from time to time, asking for educational webinar suggestions. The remaining webinars scheduled for this year include Coexisting Anxiety and ADHD, which we are hosting with the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, and will be held on September 12th, Gene Therapy 101, which we're hosting with the American Society of Gene and Cell Therapy, and will be held on October 16th, and data collection and a broad overview of the All of Us research program, which will be held on November 6th. One benefit the ABC membership has indicated is very important to them is the ABC e-news update, which is circulated bi-weekly. This update includes highlights on ABC's activities or letters and statements we circulated, a government news section including activities of the NIH and FDA, as well as brain-related topics in the news, a member news section outlining the activities of our members, a research proposal and award opportunity section, and calendar items. The ABC's website has become a resource to many members and the public. We have the standard sections, including the all about ABC, our history, our mission, our committees, our programming, and our membership list and logos with links to each member organization's website. We also have a section with a number of resources, including our Understanding the Brain page, which provides information on various aspects of how the brain works and on brain disorders, a brain initiative page outlining the many resources within this initiative, a global brain research efforts page, and available research funding opportunities. And lastly, we have a Making Advocating for Animals and Research Easy with resources and links page as well. We have a calendar outlining all of our members' meetings, hill days, and other events laid out monthly for easy access. We have a special section on our front page highlighting a different industry partner every month. This section includes why that partner feels it's important to engage with the patient advocacy community. We also have a section including all of our members and observers' research opportunities. The ABC has a good social media following as well. We have over 750 followers on Twitter with over 1,000 likes and over 3,000 followers on Facebook. The ABC linked up with the Congressional Neuroscience Caucus when it was formed in 2011. A caucus is bipartisan and is always co-chaired by one Republican and one Democrat. The Congressional Neuroscience Caucus is co-chaired by Kathy McMorris Rogers, a Republican congressional member from Washington, and Earl Blumenauer, a Democrat congressional member from Oregon. Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers has a child with Down syndrome, which is her driving force between, behind leading this caucus. Representative Blumenauer has had, an, has had the ear of Bobby Hegarty, current ABC board member, who has helped him see the importance of neuroscience and collaboration among the brain diseases. To date, the ABC has hosted 32 Congressional Neuroscience Caucus briefings and or receptions. We have generally teamed up with one or more of our member organizations to help sponsor these events. Organizations and the CNC co-chairs have really come to rely on the ABC to help plan these educational briefings. The National Academy of Medicine, then the Institute of Medicine, held a two-day workshop back in 2015, bringing together brain-related patient advocacy groups professional organizations, industry, and government agencies 
mostly ABC members actually, including the ABC ourselves, for panels to discuss the issue of private sector investment in R&D innovation for central nervous system disorders. Following this two-day workshop, a report was compiled with leaders in the field weighing in. I was a reviewer on this report, indicating there is indeed a problem with industry pulling out of CNS research. However, the IOM puts together these reports but doesn't do anything further with them. The ABC was specifically recommended as a coalition that should take on this issue. After many board and member discussions, the ABC board agreed to establish the ABC Innovation Initiative, or ABC I2. Robin Elliott generously agreed to chair the task force, which includes a group of prestigious leaders in the CNS space. CRD Associates has contracted to help us with this project. The task force has met a number of times by, by conference call and in person to, to discuss what sorts of policy issues could possibly impact this problem. It was agreed that the ABC needs additional research so that we can better understand the problem to develop possible solutions. The ABC did write a statement of opportunity, which a number of ABC members have signed on to, and which we hope will help our case should we go up to Capitol Hill in the future. The task force has an in-person meeting scheduled for October 1st in Washington, DC. We will use this time to learn about the research CRD conducted and talk about the opportunities we have for moving this initiative forward. It is our hope that the task force can leave this meeting with a set of recommendations. Following the meeting, the ABC board will have a call to discuss the task force recommendations and possibly vote on moving this initiative forward as well. Thank you again for volunteering to lead the American Brain Coalition. I will continue to be a resource to you as you take on your leadership role within the ABC. Please do not hesitate to contact me at any time with any questions or concerns. I look forward to working with you.